All right, let's talk some bonds. Let's talk some stocks going into the final moments here of the trade. Joe Mazzola joins us, head trading derivative strategist and Cooper Howard, director and fixed income strategist at the Schwab Center for Financial Research. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Joe, get us started. VIX looks like it doesn't really want to go anywhere too far beyond ah, 14, maybe 13. No, I mean, look at what the, the upside pressure has been on the equity market. And, you know, we set a new high again today. I don't know if we're going to close there, but the, you, that thrust and that, that segment you did at the, with the NASDAQ, I thought was really interesting because it's something that we are seeing as well, too. We continue to see the institutional flow in there. Uh, the equity ETF inflows for November were the highest all year. And so, you know, that continues to be movement into the market. People just aren't, aren't, aren't buying downside protection. That skew is really kind of pulled back and that's affected, uh, affected the VIX. The uh, volatility of uh, the, the realized vol, if you will, kind of the movement of the market still quite muted, but the Russell getting hit too, kind of back to that rotation uh, conversation, the uh, uh, tech stuff today, kind of uh, mixed, kind of absent, but it seems like tomorrow maybe we'll revisit uh, the whole rotation theme with jobs, right? Kind of a bigger deal for that cohort of the market. Yeah, I think so. If, you know, uh, the sectors that we've seen the most rotation out of recently, is energy, real estate, and utilities. And they've gone, to, they've gone to tech. They've gone to high beta names. They've gone to names that are set new highs. And you know, they're, they're going to names that are showing that you know, there, there's appetite for risk is, uh, is kind of what we're seeing. Yeah. All right. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Cooper, talk to me about bonds here. Uh, tenure doesn't seem to uh, also want to go too high, below 4.2 again. Uh, even though, uh, you know, there's been some attempt to sell bonds this week that keep getting stopped out. Yeah, we're in a little bit of a trading range in terms of moving sideways. But I do think, obviously, on the week, tomorrow is going to be a big catalyst, maybe um, up one way or another. I think that if you look at what the market is expecting, it's expecting a relatively decent gain in terms of the number of jobs that are added. Um, combine that with the unemployment rate that's expected to stay steady at 4.1%. And the jobs picture looks relatively okay for tomorrow. It'll be probably a little bit weaker than we have been in the past. But in terms of what I'm really going to be watching, Oliver, I think the revisions are going to be very important to focus on. We know that last month we only added 12,000 jobs. That was likely depressed because of the port strikes, also because of the hurricanes, a number of different factors. So I think the revisions are going to be what's most important to watch in terms of what comes out tomorrow, along with kind of the major other things that we normally usually focus on. Okay, so uh, and that's a good point. Comes back to uh, some KG and I were talking about earlier. There might be some wackiness from the hurricane. So getting that kind of cleared up, basically. That's correct. So. We did see some wackiness last month in terms of the hurricane impact. You saw jobless numbers in Florida, North Carolina be much lower than originally expected and kind of much lower than what the trend would imply. So I think let's see what tomorrow brings, but maybe it does bring a little bit more volatility as the market tries to wade through exactly what ultimately it does mean for the Fed and interest rates going forward. Mm. Uh, Cooper, talk Muni to me. You got a report uh, for this coming year. Uh, hit me with the big takeaways. You know, fresh off the presses, we did release our 2025 outlook for the municipal bond market today. So overall, we do think that munis will be relatively in vogue. Maybe not going back to your previous segment as in vogue as the sphere in 2025, <laughs> but we do think that there is a place for muni bonds in portfolios for high net worth investors, Oliver. And it really boils down to two reasons. One is attractive absolute yields. And then the backdrop for credit quality continues to be relatively favorable. I do think there are probably going to be some headwinds that pop up. Uh, one of them is waning fiscal aid, for example. But overall, the credit backdrop for the muni market looks relatively favorable. So we do have a um, generally positive view on a lot of segments in the muni market into 2025. All right. Uh, hey, Joe, uh, we're going to get a big uh, Santa Claus rally, uh, or is the uh, Bitcoin fade showing us the limits of risk-taking appetite? I mean, you know, follow the trend, Oliver, the trend up and we're setting new highs. I will say this, though, less stocks are participating in this move. I'm looking at the weekly uh, advanced decline and it's three to one down. So interestingly enough, while we're setting new highs, we're, we're not seeing as much participation. All right. Great stuff, guys. Thank you very much. Like the Muni chat, like the stock and the vol chat. A couple of my favorite things.